and welcome to you all to our Africa. I'm your host, Matabelo Muloi. But before we get into this episode of our Africa, do remember that you're most welcome to engage with us by simply sending us a message on our topic of discussion on our social media pages on Facebook and on Twitter. Our handle is at underscore our Africa. Or simply drop us an email at ouraffrica at anon7.com. Well, as we celebrate the African month, we are broadcasting from a burnt, dilapidated house which is hijacked, sometimes used for prostitution and drug dealing spot in Rosettenville, a suburb in Johannesburg, rather, which has been marred by large scores of violence, which saw clashes between South Africans and foreign nationals in this area. We'll take a look at these two inserts, which pretty much paint you a picture of the current situation in Rosettenville. Take a look. In the heart of Africa, when it's hot, it's this hot. When there's anger, it's this angry. When there's love, it's this adorable. And when there's peace, it's this quiet. With one step forward, together, we can all take the leap of a giant. Africa. Our Africa. Mina i kamalam ni mutem kosi ngovas chor. Ngu mumsha li lai rozeti nvi. Eni sebenza ni organization i kamala i concern residency asi rozeti nvi. The reason being, this organization being implemented is because, one, we are sick and tired of these prostitutes that are going around here, of these drug dealers who are around here, of, on this house hijacking that is implemented in Rosetta. Yes. Our main mandate is to adopt the government to come down to us because their way is sitting. It's like it doesn't listen to us. It doesn't hear us. So we were trying to dominate the government to come down here on the ground because they, one, we've got a problem with the municipal, municipal, one, all these things ha happening around here is because of municipal, two, is because of Moffat View Police Station and Boise. As you look at these houses bent down, it's not about xenophobia. People, they mustn't interpret things wrong. We are, we are staying here, we are staying with the foreigners here. There are foreigners who doesn't like this thing that are happening here. Same Nigerians, foreigner, Congolese, whoever. They don't like what is happening here. But we are setting, we're having those certain individuals of Nigerians who are dealing with this thing. And they are cooperating, one, with the police, with the municipal, with all stakeholders around here. If you go with them, we can go now to municipal. Those guys, if, if they're going into municipal, they don't stand on a queue. They go straight to the till. Talking about those people, to those people who are on the tills. And you ask yourself, I've been sitting here maybe for two hours, but why this guy come and go in there and he's get helped easily? On the prostitution side, this thing is killing our kids. It's killing our kids because this is the reason why this house is, is dropped down like this. Because we, are, we were fighting this thing of prostitute. Because this prostitute is killing our country, is killing our kids, is killing our, our value. We don't have any value anymore. And if you try to report these things, everyone, everyone who are on the so called in, in, in the in, in the law that doesn't do nothing we go around here i'm sure we will still going to find the police find that the van is packed with the nigerian where am i as a citizen of south africa if things like this are happening so easy foreigners they are coming here in south africa they get everything easy but we as South Africans, 
You can have anything that you have, you have to be destroyed with whatever you have. So what should we do now? Who should we talk to? My name is Cecilia Koma. Uh, I'm uh, for national. Um, I came here uh, in a difficult way. Uh, when I came here, it was very difficult for me. So that's why I found myself here doing uh, this, uh, what I'm doing now. It's, I'm not saying it's a good thing. It is bad, but uh, because of uh, when I came here, I suffered too much. I didn't get any job. I tried to look for any job. I couldn't get any job. That's why I'm doing this thing. Things are happening here. It's very bad. Because there's nothing, like, I'm still looking for something to do. Oh, the problem with the police, when they come here, they want to touch. Uh, some of them they will just say, I want to feel, just to feel, can I see? Uh, uh, I have 30 rand, they know our business is 50 rand, they say I have 30 rand. Or if they want to lock us up, they won't lock us up, they will tell me that let me sleep with you, then I'll let you go, I'll free you. I didn't know like where to go, so I just saw myself, I just ended up here. Joining me to unpack for the details on the current situation in Rosettenville, I'm joined by Mr. Brian Mozaringa, who's from the Disabled Migrants' Rights Networking Organization, together with Mr. Simpiwe Safa, who is the SACO spokesperson. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Our Africa. Well, just to get the ball rolling and to get the conversation, you know, started, let's just get off your reaction, Mr. Simpiwe, on the current happenings in Rosettenville. We're witnessing house hijackings, high levels of crime, prostitution, drug dealings. What do you make of the current situation in this area in particular? Again, the first thing first is to appreciate the work that uh, ANM7 has done here in exposing all these ills uh, and being with us in this revolution uh, from the onset to where we are now. Well, again, the, the issues here, they speak to, in fact, it's a reflection, a true reflection for that matter of uh, the triple challenges that have been identified by the national government, uh, the question of poverty, unemployment and inequality. So this, this community is not immune from that. Yeah. However, the, the, there's this uh, element of crime that is actually taking place here. Even here, the building in which we are now, it's, it's been used as a drug den, as a serious uh, brothel. Uh, in fact, this is where drugs were, were being manufactured. That is when now the community decided that, look, we are going to address this yeah. issue on our own because we don't have, you know, there are challenges in, in relation yeah. to, your, to your, you know, uh, 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 police and, and, and so forth, yeah. law enforcement agencies. Now, in the recent months, you know, we saw foreign nationals clashing together with South Africans living in this area, particularly South Africans blaming the higher level levels of crime, the house hijackings, the drug dealings, the prostitution, purely on all the foreign nationals living in this area. As a foreign national living in South Africa, Mr. Brown, what do you make of this? Do you think that this is purely xenophobic attacks as it was headlined in most media reports? Or do you think that there is an underlying pro problem? Uh, well, thank you very much, Matabelo. Uh, let me first acknowledge that uh, the issues raised in, in the Brazilian view, they're quite legitimate and also uh, matters of concern which is affecting the residents. But from a migrant point of view, uh, I would say we are vulnerable to an extent that issues have been generalized and other communities, they've misinterpreted and also misunderstood issues of relevance which are affecting this community. Now, Mr. Simpi, we're actually earlier on, on the case study that we saw playing earlier on right here on the show, we saw Mr. Sitole, you know, addressing the current problems that as South Africans, they feel has engulfed this, this area. 
particularly saying that their children are lured into these practices of prostitution, they're lured into drugs, you know, by the foreign nationals, Nigerians, Cameroonians, whoever, living in this area. What do you make of this? Do you think that uh, it is okay for South Africans to place the blame on them? You know, Matabelo, maybe I, that's why I slightly disagree. Here, you know, there's a scientific evidence that, you know, all these crimes that we're talking about, in fact, are perpetrated by foreign nationals. In all these drug dens, we have never found a South African. You know, uh, I don't want to make mention of uh, which nationality. Yes, of course, crime knows no nationality. True. But in the context of the revolution here in Rosettenville, all these drug dens and brothels, they are run 100% by, by foreign nationals. We, we, we visited all of them. There's not a single one that is being run by South Africa. But we are not saying that we, we stood up on the basis that they are being run by the foreign nationals. We could have done it even if it, was, it were South Africans, by the way. Mm. Now, Mr. Brian, what do you think uh, of the response from the government, particularly in hopes of dealing with the matter or the, the situation in Rosettenville in addressing you know the problems that South Africans feel that are engulfing them and are affecting them and the problems that are also facing the same foreign nationals living in this area what what do you think of the response from the government do you think that they are acting you know properly in addressing these issues um, I think issues which involve migrants uh, there are quite many to an extent that there is no political will to engage and also well, the politicians are part of the problem which has really affected the migrants. I would say the civic society, religious leaders, they played a very critical role of trying to bring different communities together, trying to bridge the difference and also to create a platform where people could engage and try to resolve yeah. issues affecting them. Now, Brian is actually making mention that the importance of law enforcement officials, government officials, you know, in playing a critical role, you know, in holding areas and communities together. Um, do you think that the South African government, working together with law enforcement officials in, in this area, are doing enough to address these, these, these problems? I've, as you've seen earlier on in one of those clips, one of the ladies actually who's working as a prostitute made mention that, you know, some police officials work in cahoots with the people who own these brothels. They are their main biggest customers. I mean, what do you say of this? It's, it's a major challenge that we, we've been actually faced with. Uh, there's been that feedback. I mean, we live in, 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 in this uh, community. There's been that form of feedback. Uh, in some instances, we have experienced that in one way or another. We've seen or rather we've witnessed uh, such kind of the behavior or misconduct. Uh, but then, unfortunately, when we begin to raise these issues as a community leadership, we then get targeted by the very same police because what we are doing now is to close down and shut down their businesses because that is where they actually, uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, uh, getting, I would say, extra cash for the for the lack of a uh, better word. And indeed, of course, uh, the police in our area. Uh, when we speak of the police, we are not necessarily speaking about SAPS. There's also JMPD being part of this. And the prosecutors in this community, they are on records yeah. as saying that, yes, of course, these people will come. The people are supposed to be protecting them. Remember, some of these prosecutors, uh, what, what these drug laws do to them, you know, they do those things against their own will. So now we, you expect then the police to come and protect this case. But then it is the very same police who will come and demand free yeah. sex and all these things. Now, also looking at, you know, the myths around foreign nationals living in South Africa. I mean, we can't turn a blind eye, you know, with the myths which and the narratives, you know, portrayed by certain people and, and, and government officials to say that, uh, you know, undocumented foreign nationals living in South Africa are automatically, you know, involved in crime. What do you, what do you, what do you say about this? Do you think that it is high time that the government starts on, you know, re-educating the South Africans and re-debunking these myths surrounding foreign nationals who are particularly undocumented? Uh, we do have a situation where there is a contradictory phenomena in effect that uh, integration and also cooperation is pulling together with uh, issues of accessibility to documentation. When people say it's undocumented, uh, you need to ask why migrants are not documented and they also is there access for them to be documented. And also the home affairs 
are they willing to engage people and also to be transparent? You know, some of the other, you know, reasons cited by South Africans right here and, you know, currently is that foreign nationals coming to South Africa and they take our jobs, they take our women, they take, you know, there's, there's this long list, you know, by South Africans, you know, to actually, I don't know, to cover up, you know, or to reasoning behind these xenophobic attacks or these clashes with foreign nationals living living in this country um do you think that uh that do, do, do you perhaps think that it's not it's, that is not the main problem well th th that is for the lack of better word that is too childish for anybody to come and say that not to rather come and claim that this yeah. and that person has taken my girlfriend or my woman and, and yeah perhaps misdirected um, anger towards the government would you say that yeah you know partly so but then that that, that is too childish uh, here in, in Rosetta we don't have such kind of the notion here yeah, we're focused on the anti uh, campaign you know solution based conversation I think is, is one thing that is most essential as much as you know we unpack details on the problems you know and the crisis and the crime and the hijackings you know and the lure of young people into drugs and prostitution I think that we also need to focus on on solutions you know and to I would really like to hear from you Mr. Simpua from Sanko and you to you from Mr. Brian who is a foreign national living in South Africa as to what do you think could be the solution particularly not all over South Africa, but particularly to Rosettenville. I'll start off with you so we can quickly wrap up and then over to you, Mr. Brown. But Mr. Safa, you can go On first. the question of the prosecution, we, we, we have submitted, and of course, a drug. We have submitted to the authorities, you know, uh, government and your uh, local um, uh, government to then say, look, we need rehabilitation centers here in Rosettenville, uh, the centers where we're going to rehabilitate the drug addicts and the prosecutors. But having done that, because we don't assist to only rehabilitate them and then release them to go back on the streets, we then said we should also have empowerment centers where we're going to capacitate them in terms of the skills so that they are they, they are ready for jobs, they are ready for the welfare yeah. to go and look and for And your jobs. opinion, Mr. Brian, just your closing solutions? Uh, well, what I would say is um, as much of such of the issues when they happen, I think there's a possibility that uh, xenophobia will be imminent again, but what is very important is for people to take the right procedure and also not to take law upon themselves because once we set a bad precedence of violence, we're not trying to resolve and also we create a, a, an environment yeah. with which is not enabling for peace well, and justice truly, and equality. Yeah, well, truly all of us really hope for peace and stability back in Rosettenville, you know, back to the community, community that we all once knew and that all foreign nationals and South Africans can live together in peace. Gentlemen, it's been a great pleasure to have you both right here on Africa, on our Africa. Well, before we end of our show, here is a story of hope that does indeed bring hope for many Rosettenville residents who are living, you know, in this very crucial times in South Africa. Take a look. My name is uh, Serafin Kenye. I came from Cameroon since 2004. I start uh, working uh, as a volunteer in uh, one accounting firm. Later on, I moved to another NGO based in Centurion, uh, King's Hope Development Foundation, where I was a pro uh, financial manager there. I realized a need of uh, migraine here in South Africa that uh, the government could also uh, was having a challenge to reach most of uh, the underprivileged migraine here in South Africa. So the idea to create African diaspora hope came in my mind. Our first program was based on uh, uh, HIV AIDS related and uh, we start uh, creating a support group where we will care for the foreign national people who are HIV AIDS affected. So later on, we also realized that uh, we could also 
provide some help in the area of education and also in the area of uh, food uh, distribution and also clothing and uh, other relating, uh, related needs for the foreign national base in South Africa. So we get idea to create a crash where we could um, be able to keep uh, some of uh, the children from the migrants who could not afford to pay a school fees. Uh, we got uh, several uh, challenges here because uh, we are facing with uh, uh, a, a category of uh, parents who are very poor in our communities and uh, uh, they cannot, they cannot uh, afford to pay the school fees. So we have to provide with everything, book, provide with uh, food. Also, we need uh, some resources to even cover our costs, like uh, the teachers. We have encountered several uh, 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 discrimination, uh, especially when we approach uh, 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 the corporate. Most corporates uh, don't uh, willing to assist uh, most of uh, this uh, category of uh, migrant children. We also encounter some uh, xenophobic uh, event from uh, the, the citizens who also uh, treat us to come and even burn uh, the property that we rent to, to run our activities. The need is too, too, too high for us to cover the cost. So we just appeal to, to get more assistance from uh, whoever can be able to come and assist us to assist this uh, category of children from our communities who are very poor. My name is uh, Leopold Ngesan from Ivory Coast. Uh, I arrived uh, in South Africa since 1997. When I arrived in South Africa, I was having an opportunity to work in a restaurant and uh, become a, a function manager. I have been a privilege of uh, doing a function for Michael Chatterworth here, yeah, Caton Center, where I was working on the 50th floor with, at uh, Maroon Restaurant. South Africa is a beautiful country, and uh, only the challenge we have here is this xenophobia attack, which for me is not good because we are African. We are African, we have to be one than seeing your black brother coming from West Africa, North Africa, anywhere, then you start fighting with him, it's not good. And uh, when time goes, come, goes on, we try to find a way how we can make this happen that xenophobia must go away. We we'll make our voice to be heard. So what we do, what we, we decide, is to organize the simunye. Simunye with men, we are one. And we say that let's make a simunye cup. First, first uh, simunye was last year, where it was having 16 countries. 16 countries, 
and then the 16 countries, including South Africa, represented by GMPD. GMPD. And then uh, when we finished, the final was Côte d'Ivoire and uh, Ghana. And uh, with our door, we decide again to say that no, we can't stop here. Let us go forward. Then this year, we make it 20 countries. Let us be united. We are one. When a fellow brother here sees that no, things are not working, let us be together. You can see the foreigners giving a job. We are giving a job to South African here. Our brothers who are selling second hand, who are opening the shop, the Ethiopian, they are, they, are, they are hiring South African to, to participate in the development of, uh, of uh, the economy. This is the idea of foreigners. Please, fellow brother, my brother, I know that you hear me. I'm your brother. I'm not coming from France. I'm not coming from, I'm, I don't know, my skin is not white. I'm black, you are black. Let us be united.